Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today is a special day because this is my first reading vlog and probably my only <laughs> reading vlog. So, I'm not personally a huge fan of reading vlogs. Mostly that is because I watch YouTube as if it were a podcast. So reading vlogs tend to feature other things that are not listenable, <laughs> I guess. And so I tend to not be the hugest fan of reading vlogs. The only reading vlogs I genuinely enjoy are Books and Lala's reading vlogs. Kayla has the best reading vlogs. They are like cinematic films in length and I enjoy every single second of them. I don't even know what it is. I just know that I vibe really hard with them. And I also enjoy Coffee Over Apple Steph's reading vlogs. I like them too, though I'm more inconsistent with watching hers again because I'm not the biggest fan. So now you're asking Natalie if you do not like reading vlogs, why are you making one? And that is because I had a special book video idea that I was like, well this kind of works better as a reading vlog, but ultimately I don't actually know if I'm just going to end up formally sitting in front of my bookshelves for every update or if I will show you the hidden depths of me looking crusty as hell when I'm mostly doing my reading because that is the truth. I do not look this put together when I'm just casually reading in my house. I look like a mess. So I haven't decided that yet but since I got the idea to reread some of my faves from when I was a teenager, I was like, that seems like a good idea for a vlog. So yeah, the whole concept of this video is that when I was a teenager, I had some more obscure tastes in YA. So like arguably two of these books might be more popular, but really I have never seen anyone on booktube talk about these books as something they read when they were teenagers, so I'm formally going to label these as obscure faves. So teenage me was certainly into the emo vibes, so three out of four of these are with the darker edge, with definitely the emo vibes. All of them though are paranormal romances though because of course they are. I became a hardcore reader after reading Twilight, so do you think I was reading anything that wasn't a paranormal romance? No, the answer is no. <laughs> So I have my stack here. The first one I'm going to talk about is actually the one that inspired this video and that is Nevermore by Kelly Craig. So this is the first in a trilogy. It was one of the fave series of one of my high school friends and I because it features this beautiful emo boy right here on the cover that I can't even remember his name but you know who I remember the name of? The side character that my friend and I loved who was in this man's dreams and that is Pinfeathers. How, how do I not remember his name but I remember Pinfeathers? I do not know, but in this book, let me tell you first what I remember from memory. What I remember from memory is that it has Edgar Allan Poe vibes because our protagonist is a stan of Edgar Allan Poe. And it the, our other protagonist, which is actually our actual narrator, is a cheerleader. So of course it's a romance between a cheerleader and an emo boy. like. This was made for me at the time, <laughs> okay? Okay? Anyway, let's look at the formal summary, which I have not looked at in ever. Actually, I didn't explain how this was the book that inspired this video. Precisely because I was talking to my high school friend, we were mentioning how we really wanted to reread this book and I was talking about how I was more skeptical because I'm terrified of no longer liking it. And she was like, no, I'm pretty confident that if I revisit the series, I'm still going to enjoy it, even if it's just for the nostalgia. And I was like, fine, let me then just go into the rabbit hole. Like originally this vlog was going to be me rereading the whole series, but I was like, what if I can barely push through book one and then the book, of <laughs> the video idea is done, it's over instead. So I was like, okay, let me just instead read the first book and a couple of other paranormal romances I enjoyed as a teenager and that were actually my favorites. Like every single book 
featured in this video was one of my hardcore favorites when I was a teenager. So now we can read the summary. And of course you can already see the chaotic energy. This video is probably gonna have a long intro and my brain is always scattered. So this is just raw Natalie here. Cheerleader Isabel Lamley is horrified when she is paired with Varen Nethers. Varen! For an English project, which is due so unfair on the day of the rival game. Cold and aloof, sardonic and sharp-tongued, Varen makes it clear he'd rather not have anything to do with her either. But when Isabel discovers strange writing in his journal, she can't help but give this enigmatic boy with piercing eyes another look. Soon, Isabel finds herself making excuses to be with Varen. Steadily pulled away from her friends and her possessive boyfriend, Isabel ventures deeper and deeper into the dream world Varen has created through the pages of his notebook, a realm where the terrifying stories of Edgar Allan Poe come to life. As her world begins to unravel around her, Isabel discovers that dreams, like words, hold more power than she ever imagined, and that the most frightening realities are those of the mind. Now she must find a way to reach Varen before he is consumed by the shadows of his own nightmares. His life depends on it. The vibes, the vibes. This is the one I'm most excited to read. This is the one that I am most hopeful, but also most terrified of not enjoying in this reread. In this reread. So yes, this is book one. The second book, which is also arguably the more popular one as well, because it got a movie adaptation, is Sea Change by Amy Friedman. So. This here is the least emo, but it is part of the roots of my mermaid obsession. Like this features a merman, a mer boy. So of course it was one of my favorites. And obviously I saw the movie adaptation of it, which I have zero memory of. I have z zero, zero memory of. I do not know how they decided to adapt this. I cannot remember. I'm pretty confident I actually own it because I could not find where the hell to watch this movie and I really wanted to watch it because it was one of my faves when I was a teenager. So if y'all are interested at all in me doing a movie reaction to that, then let me know. I would struggle to do it because I would have to figure out how to even do that kind of video, but I would try my best. Anyway, this is also arguably the more successful one as well because the author is doing good. The author is doing good. Even though she's not publishing as much, I think she's like the head of some department in Scholastic, I think. So like the woman is doing fine. <laughs> so let's look at the summary. When Miranda Merchant, 16 and level-headed, escapes her lonely hot summer in New York City, little does she know what awaits her. She steps off the ferry into an island rife with legend, lore, and a past her logical mind can't make sense of. She isn't expecting to feel a connection to this unusual place so filled with languorous charm and strange history. And when she meets Leo, a mysterious local boy, she finds herself questioning everything she thought she knew about boys, friendship, reality, and love. Is Leo hiding something? Or is he something she never could have imagined? He is. <laughs> so yes, this is book two. So all of these are the goal. Like look at how old, or <laughs> yellow the spines of these are. Look at how yellow the pages of this are. Like can't make that up. <laughs> can't make how long I have had these books with me. So probably this vlog is actually going to be turned into two because I'm probably gonna have far more footage than I ever want ever in my fucking life. So I expect that probably I will do one where I read Nevermore and Sea Change just because these are the ones that call to me the most at the moment, but that might change. And then another one where I read Meridian and The Replacement. We shall see. And also just for a point of reference, today is May 9th and I'm not actually planning on starting any of these books yet, but I will start them at some point in May. So that's why I wanted to film this intro. So 
see you whenever I update this vlog. Okay, so it's update time, but it's not really an update. It is May 13th. I still haven't read a single page for this <laughs> video. Again, because I filmed the intro mostly early just to have it ready because I really wasn't planning on starting the books quite yet. And then the plan is still for this to be the first one I read. Oh, another update is that I, since these are so old and yellowed, it's quite likely my allergies are gonna act up when I start reading them. So if it gets really, really annoying, I think I found most of them through the library in some shape or form. Some of them are unscribed and I'm not planning on keeping scribed for much longer, mostly because I had some expenses that were quite a lot with my dog. So I'm really canceling as many subscriptions as I can to save a little bit of money. So technically this is on script, but, and I don't think it's in the basic library, but maybe Hoopla has it. And then this entire trilogy is available from my library. So again, if I start getting too allergic, I can just get all the eBooks from there. And then I don't have the other two books because I was lazy. But with Sea Change, my library Hoopla also has the audiobook, so I can go the audiobook route. Right now, I'm already starting another audiobook, so I don't want to start a second audiobook because usually that just means I listen to one more than the other, and I really want to stay committed to the one I'm listening to right now because it's a sequel. <laughs> and anyway, not the point here. The point here is that I'm hoping I'll pick it up as an audiobook just to keep things interesting, especially since I have access to it. So see change, I will probably listen to the audiobook versus rereading it physically, but I don't know, maybe I will end up rereading all of these physically. The other one, the replacement, I think it was just Scribd that has the audiobook, but the ebook is also available from my library. So if all else fails, I can just check out most of these books as ebooks and that way not have to deal with my allergies. So that's the only update I have. I'm tempted to start this today, but technically I am in the middle of one buddy read. I'm trying to finish an arc I have, and I'm also kind of like in the mood for romance, sort of like straight up adult romance so like obviously this has a romance but it's not really the main thing and it doesn't really serve the vibes I want so I might not start this until next week because uh, maybe I'll just dedicate time to Mr. Impossible Nevermore and the buddy read I'm doing which is for Legendborn so that's actually I guess kind of a heads up of what I've been reading <laughs> lately so not quite sure. Instead of reading Nevermore, I might just read a couple of romance novellas in the upcoming days, but this is on my mind. This is entirely on my mind. I almost forgot that I also wanted to mention that, of course, because I'm someone who loves watching Books and Lala, I love Kayla's videos, this video is somewhat inspired by her childhood favorites vlogs. Obviously, I'm not really going that detailed <laughs> into it. Like, I'm not trying to bring you into my emo teenage years in any shape that isn't just sharing some of the books that I really loved as a teenager, as an emo kid. So I did just want to mention that, that of course this video is very inspired by Books and Lala, but I decided to take it in a slightly different direction, especially because I don't have the organizational skills that Kayla does. Like. I could never. <laughs> so like I, how do I say? Like I, I don't remember actually the year that I read most of these books. Like I, I don't have an actual memory of that. So I couldn't do like a breakdown of like, oh, this is my seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. Like I can't do that. Like even my memory of this being eighth grade is questionable. The only other book I could tell you that I read in seventh grade was the Twilight series because I went crazy in seventh grade for the Twilight series. But regardless, I just wanted to include that here as well. So okay, now, now I'll check in with you later. Okay, I'm back. It's May 20th. I'm officially going to start reading this. Did I say I was gonna start this earlier? Yes, but also at the same time I did say that I it was unlikely that I was going to start this early. So 
anyway, finally officially gonna start this. I finished Mr. Impossible yesterday by Maggie Steve Otter, so I'm not entirely hopeful that I will be successful in attempting to start this book, but I will try my best because literally Mr. Impossible fucked me up and I literally struggled to fall asleep last night because I was thinking about Mr. Impossible, so we shall see but I'm hopeful I'm hopeful and I'm almost done with the audiobook I'm currently listening to which is The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier so once I'm done with that I can start with the audiobook for Sea Change and that way this vlog can actually start rolling so I'll see you once I have an update on this and then probably I'll give you some shots of me crocheting because Steph from coffee over apples really wants that so we'll see <laughs> so yeah let's just get started okay so welcome to my backyard I hope you can hear me because we're outside so update I took off the paper because I hate reading with the paper neighbor dog anyway I am 86 pages in and I'm thriving honestly I love it I'm having such a good time like I'm not going to lie I'm not going to lie and one of the things that surprised me is that this actually has some of my highlighted quotes and honestly this takes me back to the fact that when I'm reading the easiest things for me to highlight are funny quotes things that i find amusing that's like my go-to that's what i'm always inclined to highlight so i have like <laughs> Ooh, okay let me look for one that i like so this was gonna turn out to be emo later this quote because i know what it references because i vaguely remember so after varen writes his number on her hand He's like, don't call after nine. And he and she's like, don't call after nine? What happened at nine? Was that when he retired to his tomb? Like, it's so silly. The humor here is so silly, but I just really enjoy it. I find it so wholesome. And there was another one that I wanted to share, but I can't remember now. Aha. Uh -huh. He did the prolonged silence thing again, like he needed the time to contemplate whether or not to banish her from his sight. And like the other thing is like, <laughs> it's just brilliant, it's just great. I'm having a good time. Like, do I think this is a literary masterpiece? No, but am I having a good time? Yes. Primarily it's because like, it's iconic. You're gonna hear probably the, that lawn mower in the background, sorry. Anyway. It's iconic because it's like literary genius that this author who is clearly more of a goth because like homegirl wrote a whole trilogy about fucking Edgar Allan Poe like come on doesn't get more goth than that but she was brilliant enough that she was like I'm going to write this from the perspective of a blonde cheerleader and it's just masterpiece honestly masterpiece I'm not I haven't made a good dent into this but I'm like brilliant we love to see it <laughs> what was the other thing i was going to say that yeah like the humor here is so fun yet at the same time i know it's going to get darker and like our main character isabel has like the worst boyfriend like imagine a stereotypical white boy jock and and you have him you have brad i mean he's called brad <laughs> he's called brad so honestly iconic shit icon level shit so i'm going to keep reading and i will update you when i've made more progress but so far i'm thriving especially as as well because part of the whole point here is that isabel's friends are trash like they're just bad and they bully Varen a few times and so Isabel eventually like seriously stands up to them it's like why are y'all such assholes get the fuck out and it's just the ice cream parlor scene ugh, like none of you are gonna get that reference because y'all if any of you are here you have not read this book <laughs> I'm pretty confident if any of you have read any of these books please let me know down in the comments below I need to know like I one in real life friend who has read most of these books not all but most so like one just are you out there do you exist 
Anyway, I will update you when I read more. Okay, so update time. I am 163 pages in. And I don't have much else to say right now except that there was an iconic cafeteria scene that was like horrible, like it gave me secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> it was that kind of scene, but I loved it um, because Isabel just kicks ass. She's like, you know what? All of you think you're such special snowflakes, but you're not. You're just miserable like the rest of us icon shit and right now I'm just looking for another quote that I just enjoyed because apparently that's what I do in my vlogs I just share quotes so I'm looking for them right now <clears throat> okay one of my favorites okay no actually I have to give context okay so as has been established, Edgar Allan Poe plays an important role in this story and so the whole premise is that they have to work on this paper together and presentation and Varen chooses for them Edgar Allan Poe as their American author that they're going to be presenting and writing about. And so they meet to have, you know, a study session and <laughs> she hasn't read the stories. He gave her a list of stories and poems to read for the project and she hasn't done it and so he goes he sighed a soft sound like a dying breath well have you read them she asked multiple times of course she said realizing she might as well have asked the pope if she if he'd read the bible brilliant iconic just what a time <laughs> i will come back when I have done some more reading. Oh, and we're starting to get into the dream stuff. Ah, oh, yes, yes. We're finally getting into the dream stuff and I'm hyped. So, okay, I'm back. I think I'm doing my last update for the day. And I got to page 280. I am now officially tired of reading this book. I mean, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm having a really good time with it but my eyes are tired, I'm kind of tired, I kind of need another story. I'm pretty confident this is the most I have read from a non-fave author in like one day <laughs> in a long time because I tend to just switch around stories or at least consecutively. Like I have read these 280 pages consecutively without reading another book in the middle as I have read these pages. So that's not something I tend to do a lot because I just don't have the attention span if I'm being very frank. Anyway, what is my actual update? I have finally encountered one of my favorite characters, which is Gwen. I had completely forgotten about her, but now that I'm obviously reacquainted with her, I remember how much I enjoyed her character because she's very nosy. She basically inserts herself into Isabel's life and it's like, I'm here now you're gonna have to fuck with that <laughs> because it's inevitable you can't get rid of me now and so what's out, out, outstanding to me is that this book is so thick and like i can kind of remember everything that happens and the thing is that right now i'm at the part where varen has already invited isabel to like this party and like i can remember some of the things that happen at this party but i'm like how how does it take all of this to end the book i'm like how how i i don't know i <laughs> i frankly don't know like part of me feels like the book is a bit too long but another part of me has been so thoroughly enjoying it that i really don't feel like i would even know what to cut out of it you know if i were the editor of the book but apart from that okay i was gonna mention that i love isabel's father like this this vlog is literally just me being completely incoherent like if y'all want the live process 
of how I think while I'm reading a book. This is it. I, I don't have any logic. My thoughts just jump from one to another without any logical pattern. But anyway, I, I find it funny because I remember from the series when I started this, and first saw Isabel Soller, I was like, oh, I remember that I really liked him. I liked Isabel Soller. And I distinctly remembered that there was a lot of like, not a lot, but there were sweet moments between Isabel's father and Varen. And I had completely forgotten that the first time that Isabel's father meets Varen, she he cannot stand he cannot stand him he cannot stand him he thinks he's a hooligan like he literally calls him a hooligan and like obviously it's because he has this you know goth emo vibe going on and his dad is like how can you go from brad the jock to this <laughs> but they'll work it out i know they will i'm if not in this book eventually and so now I'm starting to think like, damn, I should have stuck to the original idea of just reading this whole trilogy for the first vlog because I feel like I'm going to want to continue <laughs> reading, but I'm going to have to put it off because I really do want to actually finish this vlog idea. And I might actually end up making more vlogs where I continue with this and if I enjoy some of the other, the, the other book in the second part of this vlog, what will be the second part? of this vlog if i enjoy that book i want to continue with that series and that will be basically the next installment in this vlog series but anyway i'm going to shut up now <laughs> and i will update you whenever i have read more okay so update time which isn't really update time so since i had mentioned already that steph from coffee over apples wanted me to film myself crocheting i have my yarn i'm going to start that i'm going to be making another little whale like this so that's what i'm going to be doing and when i get to the more repetitive part of making that whale then i'm going to start listening to sea change again i should have grabbed the physical copy i have of it but i'm going to start it as an audiobook officially checked it out from the library so that is what is going to be going on right now and of course i will also eventually update you on this but obviously not going to be reading this physically when i'm crocheting like that's ridiculous so you'll have now my shot of me crocheting I just have to comment right now because you can't even see my face i'm gonna move like this but like literally i'm listening to the audiobook right now and we already have an iconic i let out a breath i didn't know i was holding which on i know it has been more criticized now more recently than you know before when this was released either 2009 or 2010 but icon shit and then the i'm not like other girls vibes are intense intense okay and i'm like nine minutes into this <laughs> oh okay i'm gonna continue now okay update time i finished the top part of my little whale you know i will continue working on this later but i am 20 minutes i think it's 20 minutes into sea change <laughs> we shall see how it goes but we have miranda who's already like i'm not like other girls i like science i wear converse i have brown hair <laughs> I'm like, girl, you're not that special. But regardless, obviously, it's still a major trope now and in the early 2000s. Actually, that would be the mid-2000s. Like, obviously, that was a trope. So, you know. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, I don't have much else to say. They're already dropping hints about mermaids in the book. They're already like, well, there's been creatures spotted in the island, blah, 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 blah. So we shall see how I feel, but the vibes are entirely different from Nevermore. So I, we shall see. Let's just say we shall see. No, mira, okay. I, <laughs> what is this book? <sighs> I had to share this quote. I just, I just had to. My 19 year old brother, and I even looked for the physical copy so that I could actually read the quote instead of like listen to the quote enough times that I could say it out loud to y'all. So context. The whole point here is that our protagonist is talking about how she is staying with her mom in this island Selkie and her brother is with their dad and so it starts my 19 year old brother wade was with our father in los angeles and i sort of enjoyed the idea of the genders being divided across the country like the union and the confederacy ma'am what <laughs> I want to understand this comparison. I want to understand this simile. I, I truly do. <laughs> but I'm questioning, I'm questioning it. 15 pages in, questions. Okay, so another update on this. <laughs> um, there's a black girl described as having the skin the color of dark chocolate. Not my favorite, but you know, not the worst offense. I still see actual black women writing and describing their female characters this way, which, you know, but it's still not a fun time. <laughs> um, what else has happened? We continue with Miranda, is that her name? I think it's Miranda being difficult. <laughs> being like, I'm so different. My mom and I are different. We don't care about pretty things and shopping and whatever. And we thrift our clothes and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I need a break from this. The short answer is I need a break from this. I'm going to sit down now to read some of this and hopefully find some inner peace since I was having a good time with this. So, and this is putting a bad taste in my mouth. Like there's also been other comments that I've been like, mm, I don't know. And right now I don't want to look for them. Okay, update time again. So finally, the icon himself shows up i let me look for the chapter where his name appears yes why doesn't this want to focus stupid but the point is pin feathers pin feathers is finally here <sighs> i miss pin feathers like pin feathers is that character that you can't help but love but he's kind of untrustworthy like he's the type that he'll backstab you but at the end of the day he's like i got your back <laughs> does that make any sense i'm not quite sure but that's basically who he is as a character like he'll let you down in certain things but truly at the end of the end of the day he's not going to let you die you know basically it's like he'll stab you but it's like but did you die no and i'll keep someone else from killing you so that's that's what pen feathers boils down to and then there's the whole thing i haven't actually talked about how horrible brad is like he's genuinely a terrible person we already know about the bullying but now we find out that basically he beat the shit out of varen because he's an asshole and varen was already having a bad afternoon okay because his own father also it's heavily coded that he also beats the shit out of varen so it's like two assholes one evening yay <laughs> so that's what's going on here and i'm having a good time that feels like a bad thing to say shortly after saying that baron just had traumatic experiences essentially back to back but that's not the point okay another update i finally got this 
in the mail the publisher reached out to me saying like hey do you want a copy of on the hook by francisco x stork and i was like yeah like this was already on my radar from one of the book tours that i w participate in sometimes this was already on my radar because of them but i really didn't have the time to participate in the tour but independently the publisher still reached out to me and was like do you want it and i was like go ahead so it's here finally i will eventually get to this hopefully during the rest of the summer but anyway that's all i have to say i'm really trying to get to page 380 of this because that's essentially what i've been trying to do i'm like i'm trying to tackle it like by 100 page chunks and so yesterday i did two 100 and 100 page chunks plus another 80 pages so i'm feeling pretty good about that and once i get to 380 essentially this is still what's left of the book for me because it's 500 pages why did i start with this chunky boy but then i'm like 60 pages into this 68 pages and it's painful i haven't listened to any more of it since i last updated you i just wanted to say the actual page count since i checked for it and i had it when i gave you the update so that's it that's everything i have to say okay update i can't even speak update time it is may 22nd did i update y'all yesterday i can't even remember anymore what days are anymore <laughs> So I made some progress with a sea change. I was working on the backyard yesterday, not yesterday, today. Can y'all tell I'm tired that I'm doing this update half awake conscious of anything? Okay, so I worked on the yard today. I didn't film any of that because no way in hell was I showing you my extra crusty self in the backyard doing that. But I did that and I was listening to the audiobook of Sea Change while doing that. I made it all the way to page 101 or around there more or less. And so, so far I don't really have much to say. The, these pages have just been, you know, whatever. I mean, I do feel like the romance is going pretty fast, like faster than I would like it to, because literally these two, these characters had two conversations, or would it be three? Okay, it was the conversation, and the love interest is named Leo, right? And a reminder, Miranda is our protagonist. So Leo and Miranda talked that one time, they met coincidentally, and then they talked again when she went to basically like either this museum, aquarium thing that there is in this small island she went to that thing and they talked there and then that same day they met up again for like basically a walk on the beach which was supposed to be a tour whatever doesn't matter so they had a total of three conversations and then already had a kiss and she's already like oh my god guess it's okay whatever and i'm like okay i guess like it's not terrible and like i could totally buy a teenager doing that like a lot of her thought processes when it comes to leo i'm like that makes sense to me i just do not care <laughs> i simply do not care and then we have these this thing that i hate though i can kind of understand and it's that part of the more relational conflict here is that miranda comes from a family that has property in this island and there is a whole community of these heirs which are basically the rich people that go to summer in this island versus the people who actually live in the island and are primarily fishermen and so the whole conflict here is that the other heirs are very hoity-toity essentially and they care about their image and whatnot and they're very superficial and so it's incredibly played up and she starts liking this guy leo who is a fisherman's son and essentially the rest of the heirs which her mom now is like spending more time with they're kind of like no you can't date a local what are you talking about and i'm just like i guess you know so that's 
that's what's going on here. And then I haven't read any more of this today. I'm hoping to get some reading done now. I may not update you on that until tomorrow though, unless I decide to do like a very shitty lighting update in my room <laughs> telling you basically, well half, even less than less awake than I am now <laughs> telling you, oh so this is what I read, blah 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 blah. So looking forward to reading more of this though because this has been the actual enjoyable experience. So there's that and then the other update i wanted to give you was my crochet i finished the belly of the little whale and i put in the eyes of the whale and so i still need to do like the the fins here because the little tail was done as part of the process of making this top part so i will update you when i eventually get around <laughs> to making the actual fins for the whale to finish it off. So that's it for this update. Okay, so this is officially my last update for tonight. Sorry for the probably shitty lighting, but we're in my room and it's nighttime, so like what else are you expecting? Anyway, so I managed to read, I think, 60 pages of Nevermore. I think that's how much I got into it and I'm so sad I'm so sad because I know that I'm probably going to end it tomorrow I'm gonna finish it and I'm going to, <laughs> to read the sequel so bad but I don't really have time to read the sequel right now but my main thing that like finally we got to the part where Isabel attends the Grim Facade which is basically she calls it goth prom <laughs> It's the perfect description for it, I'm not going to lie. And honestly, I remembered it as her being more badass going to it because she goes to this literally basically goth prom wearing a pink dress. In my mind, Isabel was so badass and like, yeah, my boyfriend is a goth prince and I'm a bubblegum bitch. What about it? What are you gonna do? But in reality, she was like, they're gonna fucking eat me alive why because Gwen is the one who makes her the pink dress Gwen is the one who was like put this on and Isabel is like what are you doing everyone's going to be looking at me like I'm fucking insane <laughs> and Gwen is like this way Varen can fucking easily find you because right now the drama going on is that Isabel is trying to find Varen because weird shit is going on with Varen and Essentially, it boils down to the dream stuff going on for Varen is getting all fucked up. And so she's trying to find him and she knew she would find him at this party. So Gwen was like, well, duh, this will make it easier for him to locate you. So <laughs> icon. Gwen is just icon. Like truly, Gwen is the one who had that energy. Like Varen is not her boyfriend, but she has the badass energy of being like, yeah, I'm going to wear this fucking pink dress and what about it and what about it <laughs> so that is my last update for today i will see you tomorrow it's may 23rd and we did it y'all we finished nevermore it's done it's red it's over and <laughs> i'm really fucking emo about it Oh, it was so good. It was so good. I'm confidently giving this four stars. I'm not going to change my rating on Goodreads, which is five stars, but like revisiting it, I don't really think it's a five star now where I'm at in life. But I feel like if I were being harsher, I would give it like a 3.5. So like still a solid read, still very much worth picking up even now. So like I would still like, I would unironically recommend this. As long as you go into it knowing that it's an older YA, I still think it holds up actually pretty well. I, like surprisingly well, I think this holds up in comparison to the other one I'm reading. But basically, what do I have to say about the ending? Reynolds is an asshole. You will know if you ever decide to pick up the series. Reynolds is a pain in my ass. Pin Feathers is still an icon, still peak content. And 
Listen, I I feel like I'm not correctly remembering the sequence of events because the way I remember this ending might be actually how the second book ends. But obviously I don't know that because I haven't read the second book yet. But I'm definitely going to be vlogging my experience reading the sequel. So like I don't even know how I'm gonna make that work. I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm definitely going to be vlogging that because I need to continue this series. I need to remember how this gets resolved because I I just need answers. I need answers. Like obviously I know it's all going to work out. I know it works out, but I I need to know all the facts. So again, I just love this. It was great and honestly every single page was a joy and a delight. So even though it was a chunky a chunky boy like he chunky. I, I, I accept and love the chunk. Okay, so that's that on that. I have not read anything <laughs> of Sea Change. Like, I went out today to get some clothes from Old Navy. Like, very basic stuff. Like, nothing worth showing to y'all. And I went with my stepmom and we also went to Home Depot to buy some plants and shit. We got some tomato plants and some basil. So, I'm hyped for that. And hopefully tomorrow I'll get into this. I'm hoping to clean the floor tomorrow. And I like doing that while listening to an audiobook. So, I'll probably make some progress once I am cleaning. So hopefully I'll have an update on sea change for y'all tomorrow. But definitely this is a YA that I don't feel is aging too well. Like it's not the worst, but it, it definitely has the cringe of like, I'm not like other girls elevated to high <laughs> intensity. So yeah, I will update you again when I have anything of value <laughs> to say and basically what's left of this vlog is just me finishing this and then I can start part two of the vlog where I read the other two books that I originally planned to read for this vlog. Okay so update time it's May 24th I have made it to page 158 of Sea Change. I, I'm feeling pretty lukewarm about it I'm not going to lie the main thing that's happened is that Miranda kind of has like this love triangle thing going on but not really because it's like this other guy is interested in her and she originally was interested in him. He's called TJ. Now she's not really interested and so she went off to spend time with Leo and now they're doing this whole <laughs> stupid thing of like because he's a local he's obviously like of lower class than she is and so she first is like just vibing in the area of the island where the locals live and she's having a good time but then once she starts thinking that leo might be a merman she's like oh my god what if he's not trustworthy and he lied about like she okay i now i remember the major thing i wanted to update you all on the first time they hung out he said oh i'm taking you on a beach tour or whatever but that wasn't true like the place where he works at yeah they do that but they only do that on wednesdays and they went out on a Friday and she was like why did you lie about that and I'm like bitch isn't it obvious because he wanted to hang out with you like it's not that deep girl like it's really <laughs> not that deep and so she has that whole drama going on and I'm like girl and so she just started thinking like I don't know if I can trust him and what if he's a merman because everything in his house because they end up walking to his house and she's like everything there's so many signs that he might be a merman and whatever and I'm like and what why does that equate that for some reason he's trying to hurt you I'm like why <laughs> How are those synonyms? I don't know. And so she ends up saying some shit she shouldn't say. And so he ends up being like, I thought you were different. And I'm different. So, <laughs> bye. 
And so she, I left off in the part where she goes home and she wasn't supposed to be out so late because like a storm was coming in and her mom is all like, I don't know what you're doing. What's gotten into you? And her mom is also acting all strange. Her mom has been like leaning into like the rich white woman thing because she started hanging out with another of the heirs like one of those heir families and reconnecting with her young love which was also another of the heir families and it's like girl what are you talking about you are acting bizarre as well so it's just <laughs> whatever i'm going to stop talking now that's everything i have to say i'll update you once i have listened to some more okay i have an incredibly short <laughs> update and it is that i'm on page 173 i'm mean, that's not where i quite left off but that doesn't matter the point is that it's the fourth of july and then we have this quote mom had even made a joke about the number of confederate flags that hung alongside american ones what joke i want to i want to see the joke <laughs> like that's the problem like that like that leaves too much to my imagination i'm like don't tell me she made a joke about the confederate flag tell me what the joke was so that i can understand what side y'all are <laughs> y'all are on because i'm scared <laughs> i'm scared so i just what is this anyway i i'll see you later okay so it is may 25th i have officially finished reading sea change <laughs> before i get into my thoughts I just need to talk about the obsession this author has with the Civil War and this book. Like, it, it, is, it is too much for my poor soul. Like, it didn't quite make sense to me throughout the whole thing that this island was like... Where was it? Like, a southern island close to Georgia? Fuck if I know, but it's in the south. And that's why it's so American and southern and kind of disgusting. But anyway, what are the gods? <laughs> was I felt distinctly old world glamorous, almost like a southern damsel from the Civil War era, as Leo carried me up the porch steps. La respuesta es no. Because you know what a southern woman during the Civil War era was? Someone I don't want to know. Someone I do not want to know. <laughs> And then there was this beautiful bit about Miranda's grandmother. Her name is Isadora and it says, Isadora had very little regard for Yankees. She was one of those Southern women who referred to the Civil War as the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> I'm so happy this book is over. Honestly, the Civil War quotes, the references, obviously not quotes, but like the references to the Civil War are enough to make this <laughs> horrible for me. But in general, what do I have to say? What would I rate this? I think I'm going for like two star. Honestly, I don't even know. Like, I'm like, it's it doesn't feel bad enough for a one star, but it's still not <laughs> good. Basically... I think the romance is lukewarm, the relationship isn't developed that well, and sure the scenes between them are cute, like I do I do see the chemistry and I do see the appeal and I can understand why my teenage self liked their relationship, but honestly there wasn't much of a relationship. I don't know, it just wasn't that great, but it was fine. So there was that. Then there's the is he or isn't he a merman and that whole mystery bit which was fine and definitely one of the big things that was I forgot to turn on my ring light oh my gosh okay <laughs> So that was definitely one of the bits where I, if you me, I have a cat trying to invade my tripod. It's up yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, the whole merman mystery was definitely one of the things that I enjoyed when I was reading this story. And there's this whole scene where it's like, mira, te se quieta. The cat is trying to make this a difficult filming experience and the whole scene where she's like did i really see him in the ocean transformed into a merman or was i hallucinating like the whole thing like those vibes i can definitely understand 
why I was into them and having read the ending for a second time and how ambiguous it is in terms of like she was literally in this island for just a couple of weeks and so the ending is bittersweet because she has like a goodbye for Leo but like their relationship was so short-lived that it really is like what else happens is this really the end like it ends kind of like oh there's they'll, they'll see each other again but like not in a satisfying way so this is definitely a reminder as to why I wanted another book in this and why other readers also wanted a second book because because truly the ending is very ambiguous and I don't think the author ever planned to write a sequel for this but anyway there was that and then there's this whole bit was one of the other negative factors for me in the story where the protagonist reveals that her ex-boyfriend cheated on her and that's why their relationship ended and they go through this whole weird thing where like there's like some kind of like redemption arc I guess for all the southern heirs here but like that didn't feel earned like these people still showed themselves to be very superficial and interested in their image and all of these things and so like it didn't feel earned Earned for it to be like oh uh, we have to give them a second chance it was nice and for Miranda's mom to be like oh it was nice to reconnect with old friends and blah 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 none of that really felt earned and so when Miranda went around and was like maybe I will talk to Linda I think was the name of her friend Linda was almost so irrelevant in this story that I can't even be sure that was her name but Linda was basically her one friend who was the girl who her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend cheated on her on with whatever and it's like why? like I guess part of it comes because there's this whole part about Miranda's grandmother having an affair and you know like kind of like trying to redeem Isadora for her affair and it, it was just sloppily executed like I could see it working but it just wasn't done in a way that made it satisfying when Miranda made certain conclusions you know so and then you add in all the civil war shit and it's just I don't know ma'am I don't know ma'am but that, that's everything I have to say about this and of course I love that I'm ending this video looking extremely crusty but I don't really feel like doing a whole wrap up thing because honestly I only read two things so like what is there to wrap up like two like maybe two clips ago I told you my thoughts on Nevermore but in general what have I learned I guess I'll do that what have I learned that some of my taste is questionable <laughs> and some some of it isn't as questionable like we shall see in the second installment of this vlog series if I can be further trusted or if truly I was more into the chaos vibes because here definitely this one it does have a kind of twilight-ish thing where Isabel and Varen feel very codependent because they spend a lot of time thinking about each other and it's very like obsessive like but ultimately I don't think the relationship itself is toxic because most of the time literally Varen is trying to keep her away from all his drama and all the things that would put Isabel's life in danger so like ultimately I don't find anything unhealthy in the relationship here at least in the grand scheme of things and at least in this first book and it definitely also is actually trying to tackle toxic relationships because Isabel's ex-boyfriend is his own dilemma drama thing of being like a terrible boyfriend yet at the same time Isabel still cares about him so there's this whole part where she's trying to save his life because his life is in danger and so it, it, it does tackle like very intricate relationships in a nice way that I, I appreciate and enjoy and there's a lot of morally great characters and characters that really are toxic and seen for their toxicity so honestly again a solid book and so I can definitely see why teen me loved it and I can still see why teen me loved sea change but definitely this leans into the more questionable side of things and so in our exploration of the next two books we shall see if I went for gold <laughs> or or not or fool's gold you know you know so yeah I think that's everything I want 
to say like I don't know what else there is to say like how do people wrap up vlogs I have no idea but that's it for today's video I guess thank you all so much for watching it feels weird to do the same ending as for a regular video but I guess if you enjoyed this and you watched the whole thing don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you would like to follow me on any of my social media I will have the links to that down below in the description but for now, see you next time.